Hi, this is Maginoni, and here's my review on the two Brightest Day Green Lantern titles that came out. We have uh, Green Lantern number 54 and GLC number 48. I'm going to do uh, this one first. Okay. Lots of things are happening. You have the continuation of the Red and the Green Lanterns and how there's going to be this big thing coming. Then you have Gambit leaving the Guardians. He also he basically relinquishes his hold on the blue, and what he wants to do is he's going to become a Green Lantern now. Which is actually I thought was a kind of interesting turn because now you're having a Guardian wearing the Green Lantern ring, and um, now he's going to be basically patrolling like everybody else. So it's kind of a new. It's a good twist, I think give you some insight on how they make the ring and story moves on you have Green Lantern who was um, injured and he's experiencing some flashback nightmares and in the middle of the night an Alpha Lantern comes to see him and takes him away saying basically he's been promoted to be an Alpha Lantern which this part doesn't make sense because usually it, it the Alpha Lanterns were only looking for specific types of characters, and this guy is nothing like what these guys need. We have some blah 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 story time. It's not that it's blah blah blah, it's just rebuilding and things like that. Now, John Stewart was summoned, and one of the Alpha Lanterns says that you're needed to help me. There's a search, not only say not search, but you have, we have an infiltration mission. And because of your military background, you're perfect for this job. And um, they go flying off. Now you have, if you remember that fuzzy lantern from the beginning, his partner's looking for him and he can't find him. Well, guess what? His buddy, who's now an alpha lantern, found him. And they're recruiting him to become an alpha lantern also. Um, overall, I mean, this, oh. Yeah, overall, I thought this was a pretty decent book. It's not like it's... It lost a lot of its oh my god moments, but now it's just rebuilding things. So I'm curious to see where everything's going to go. It, of course, you know, if you've been reading Green Lantern and the whole Darkest Night, Brightest Day storyline, this is going to key to what's going on, so it's almost like you have to read it. So, I mean, it's, it's good. It just doesn't hold as much excitement for me anymore as I like, used to. Next up is Green Lantern number 40, sorry, 54. You have a group of people, uh, you know, criminal guys running through the subway causing trouble, robbing people, and luckily for the people on the train, there happens to be a couple of Red Lanterns present and they clean house. Now, if DC ever, ever makes a plush of this cat, I am so buying it. I don't know about you guys, but I love this cat. Now, the thing that makes me wonder what's going on here is, if you notice here at the very beginning, you have the, he's in both issues, and the only thing I can think of is, this is like a flashback, even though it doesn't really say flashback or anything like that, because, you know, they're saying that something important, something big is happening, and... It looks like he's right now on the quest to find whatever that is. Now, you have the Hal and Sinestro and them trying to deal with the White Lantern. We've already seen this before in other issues, but so they're rehashing it yet again. Now, I really like the art, though. I really like how the, the Lantern is trying to ground itself. And um, this whole sequence of events there... While it's, it's giving you a lot of flashback, I'm not sure not a lot of flashback, a lot of foreshadowing, a lot of visual information, it's really, I think it's really illustrated well. And I think they really did a nice job. You have that cloaked figure that's been running around. He goes to the sun where Ion is, and he's like, you know, your people are a little out of control. You cannot have this anymore. So here, let me take this Ion out of you, this responsibility out of you, and that way they can revert back to normal. 
So he steals that Rimber, if you remember from Blackest Night, the ending where they had the different lanterns and they had the different creature type things. Well, he pulls that right out of Ion and keeps it. Now, without the sun being yellow, it reverts and everybody loses their powers and a ton of people fall to their death. Now, the lanterns, the the white lantern basically says, uh, this guy is going to help them, teleports them to them, they find out that there's trouble in the subway, and here's where they're on, the red lanterns are on a mission, and they have obviously have to go to these different spots. I really like this part of the story for the red lanterns, just in the sense that you now have shown them as a character rather than something that's just driven by anger. They're still driven by anger, but now they're able to think. They have um, goals, and I think that's really important in the grand scheme of keeping the Red Lanterns a viable character type. Um, there's a sh And then from here, there's a short battle due to the misunderstanding. Of course, Hell does... Well, Hell likes the fact that they save people. He does not approve the fact that they just butchered a bunch of people. And at the very end, you have Lobo arriving. Now, I'm not sure why Lobo is even involved in this storyline, but hopefully he's not in there just for to increase sales. And that's pretty much the end of this issue. Now, just as a quick recap, loved this issue. Totally enjoyed it. This one, my enjoyment level dropped quite a bit, but unfortunately it's key to the storyline, so I still have to get it. Hopefully this will pick up, and if um, you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on the side, and um, if you could be a lantern, which ring would you wear? Um, let me know, and uh, as you can see, I'm wearing multiple colors, so um, until next time.